Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about radiation hybrid mapping. Radiation hybrid mapping. This is a slight modification of somatic cell hybridization, which we have discussed in our previous lecture. Here, in radiation hybrid mapping, what we do is we take the human cell line and radiate it with X-rays. And the range of the rads we use is around 3,000 to 8,000 rads. And this will cause the chromosomes to break into pieces. And this broken pieces are now used to fuse along with your mouse cell line. And this cell line now can be HPRP negative, and this cell line can be now PK negative. This contains the only variation between somatic cell hybridization and the radiation hybrid mapping is this cell line now contains broken pieces of chromosomes of the human cell line. And here you have all the chromosomes intact for the mouse cell line. And the rest of the technique of fusion and then selection in the hat media is one and the same. And again, how are these pieces identified? These pieces are identified to belong to a particular chromosome, again, based on the banding pattern, right at the end of the day. Yes, when now fusion takes place, one thing has to be understood is your fragments or the broken pieces will now get integrated into the mice chromosomes or the rodent chromosomes, integrated into the rodent chromosomes. That has to be clearly understood. So we look at the diagram here. What have we done? We have taken chromosomes. We can use high dose and low dose. And now we have fragmented chromosomes. When you have used a high dose, there'll be more number of fragments. When you have a low dose, you'll have a lesser number of fragments. Now what do we do? We take irradiated human nucleus and then the irradiated hamster. I was talking about rodent. Instead of mice, in this particular diagram, it is shown as hamster, which is a rodent. And after cell fusion and selection, what did I tell you? The ones that are green in color here, they get integrated into the rodent cell line. That's what I have mentioned here. They get integrated into the cell line. And this integrated cell lines are now taken down and then used for STS mapping. STS mapping. Now, to understand in which chromosome this short green piece belongs to is again the same old story of looking at the banding pattern. Once again, I repeat, you have a green part of the chromosome integrated into the hamster chromosome, and you want to identify after STS mapping to which chromosome this particular piece, the green piece, to which chromosome in humans does it belong to. The only way you can do it is, again, go for banding pattern. Now, how do you go for banding pattern here? Take these chromosomes in entirety or in totality from the hamster, and then band them or go in for different banding techniques. And when you go for different banding techniques, you have certain segments on the chromosome of hamster that belong to specific bands of hamster and certain segments that belong to specific bands of humans. Now, for example, 
you have certain segments belonging to specific bands of hamster and certain segments belonging to specific bands of humans. Now compare these bands of humans with already established band banding patterns of different chromosomes and then identify the chromosome. And that is how here, this small pieces of chromosomes that are integrated into the genome of hamster are used for STS mapping. Thank you.